Hey, it's Dave, another Nerdy Canuck. Today's video is about the setup of the two data outputs of the Dig Uno, although more accurately it should be called the Dig Duo, and we're going to do that in three different light segments. I am fairly new to the WLED world, but I did have a hard time finding all of this information, so I thought it would be useful to gather it together into a single video about what I've learned so far. I will not be going over how to install or update the WLED software on the Diguno, as there are lots of great video tutorials on the internet already. This summer, I am planning on installing permanent Christmas lights controlled by WLED, but wanted to do a test setup this year to become familiar with the lights. I'm using some Amazon Alatov 12 volt WS2811 RGB pixel lights and version three of the Dig Uno controller. The Dig Uno controller comes with an ESP32 controller chip that can handle a maximum of about 600 LEDs per data channel. My final setup will be closer to 1000 lights, so I will be using these two LED channels to keep the Dig Uno outputs to uh, less than that magic number of 600. For this particular test setup, I will have 250 lights along my roof line using one data output and 300 lights going to my Christmas trees, which will come from the second data output. A simple schematic of my system looks like this. So I have a 12 volt power supply going to the Dig Uno, and then I connect my roofline lights from the power output from there, as well as the data, obviously, and I have power injection after about 150 LEDs. I then added my two trees with power injection between them, I didn't notice any dimmer pixels with this type of power injection. It's one of the benefits of the 12 volt LEDs. The furthest pixel uh, is only 125 pixels from an injection point, And that's located in about the middle of my big Christmas tree. This is what the Dig Uno chip actually looks like. You can pull the controller portion off. You need to do that in order to access the screws to connect the wires. It also allows you to see the labels a little bit clearer on the controller. Since my LEDs are 12 volt, I will be supplying 12 volt DC to the Dig Uno in the positive and negative terminals. This uh, filtered 12 volt signal is passed through to the LEDs to power them. The Dig Uno automatically steps the voltage down to 5 volts for the ESP32 controller and send it, sends out a boosted data signal along each of the data outputs. I will be having LED1, which is GPIO16, signal going to the trees, and LED2, or GPIO3, going to the roof line. The 12 volt power supply from the Diguno is currently supplying power and the data signal, and then I'm using raw power directly from my power supply for power injection. I don't know if that's a great idea or if there, it matters or not, but if you have any knowledge or experience with that, please let me know in the comments below. Here's a quick video of the actual setup of what it looks like. It is temporary, so please forgive the sloppiness. I have the electronics in an old toolbox on the porch. The Dig Uno is supplied with 12 volts, and it sends that 12 volts out through two different lines, one to each set of lights, one for the roof and one for the Christmas trees. Obviously, each one gets its own data cable. The string of lights for the Christmas tree starts at the bottom of the large tree and winds towards the top. I then connect a wire to carry the signal down the center of the tree and over to the little tree. And I do the power injection right here between the trees. The roof line string runs from the Dig Uno through the garden and up the downspout to the first set of lights. They run along the roof and uh, I believe I got three strings of 50 along the roof and then uh, another two strings of 50 for a total of 250, and there's power injection that runs back to the 12 volt power supply. Okay, now let's log into the controller. Uh, you can find the IP address of your controller on your app. I'll uh, put up a photo here of your app. It just gives you the IP address. Uh, once you have it, you type in the address to your ULL bar, and poof, you come to your controller. Now, by default, it's going to be showing you the app view. However, because I'm looking at it on a PC, I'm going to go to PC mode. And this is handy because it allows you to see all of the different parts at the same time. If you'd like me to make a video about how I set up my connection to the controller, let me know in the comments below. Now that we can access the controller, let's set up our LEDs. So first of all, we have to go to the config page. And under LED preferences, 
we have to uh, set up our LED hardware. Now you'll notice that up at the top here we have uh, 550 LEDs that I have already set up. I do not have the enable automatic brightness limiter checked. Under the hardware setup, you can see that I have my two data outputs. I'm using WS2811 RGB LEDs. And a uh, setup for my roof line, I have 250 LEDs and they're connected to GPIO3. And I have the same type of LEDs and for the two trees, and there's a total of 300 of those for GPIO 16. Now, just to show you how you set these up, I'll just uh, delete number two. And so basically, you're just going to go ahead and select your LED type. Uh, you'll see that the default is green, red, blue. Mine are actually red, green, blue. And if you're interested in a video on how to do that, there's lots of them out there. Or you can ask me in the comments below. Uh, the start is going to be 250. It automatically guesses that from the previous one, and I can tell that it has a length of 300. Now, before I do that, you'll notice that the total LEDs currently is showing as 251. So that's 250 from this first uh, GPIO, number three, and number 16 so far has just one, but I'm going to tell it that there's 300 of them and that it's located on GPIO number 16. Uh, if you had a ditch quad, you would have more of these that you could set up. But you'll see the total LEDs I have is 550, and that is accurate. Now, it's important that you remember to save this. I'm not going to save it because in case I set up something incorrectly, I'm just going to back out of here. Once you have identified which uh, data line is going to control the various LEDs, from this point on, you don't need to know anything else about those data lines. From now on, all that matters is we have 550 LEDs numbered from 1 to 550, and the controller will figure out which data line to use to control them. Now that we have our LED set up, we can go ahead and set up our individual segments. So you'll see that I have a segment here called uh, Colorful Different. That just means I have something different on each of my segments. So you'll notice that I have three segments selected, roofline, big tree, and little tree. So if I just open up one of these, you can see that I'm starting at zero. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Zero is like a non-LED. It has to be for the starting. And then I've got 250 LEDs along my roofline. The big tree goes from uh, 251. So again, this is a, a start and to a stop at 500. And my little tree is from uh, 501 to 550. So what happens is I have these all set on a different indication. Now, when you have them all selected, it's only going to show you the first uh, value. So scroll down here. So you'll see that uh, it says flow. And if you go below, then it's going to stay at the top. And if you go down to the bottom, it's at the bottom. But you can't really see that on my screen right now. So it's just off uh, my recorded area. When you're trying to figure out what segment is showing which effect, it's going to show right here at the top when you're scrolled to the bottom. And if you have more than one selected, it's going to be showing you the, uh, the default segment or segment zero. If I disconnect these, you'll see that this uh, little tree is color twinkles. With nothing selected, again, it's showing segment zero by default. When I have the big tree, it's selected to colorful, and the roof line is selected to low. So if I have more than one of these selected, uh, it's just going to show the most of the top one and then color twinkles. So what happens is if you want, you can change individuals of these. So for example, if I take the, sorry, I just noticed that my drone was drifting a bit there. A little breezy outside. So if I take my little tree and change that to try chase, you'll notice that it's going to uh, change just that segment. And if I select the big tree and uh, call that on a washing machine, I'm not sure what washing machine is going to do. That's pretty cool. Let me maneuver my drone a little bit uh, better here so I can uh, see the tree a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so that's set up as washing machine, and if you want to change two of them, so if we call this to uh, try fade, I've selected both of them, so now both of the uh, 
small tree and large tree are going to do that. And again, if I throw in the roof line as well and select dry fade, then all three of them are going to be doing the exact same uh, effect. So that's basically how you do a single se segment. Once you have everything set up the way you want, all you have to do is click uh, create a preset and uh, you can enter in a name, uh, make sure all these boxes are checked and it will save it to an ID and you can save that particular preset. Of course, one of my presets is called all off. So I'll select that. That's important for your macros to be able to program your lights and be able to turn them off at a specific time. So I'll turn them back on to uh, something a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and you'll see that there's a, a single string chase. So what you'll notice now is that I have a single segment goes from 0 to 550 or uh, LED 1 to 550. So it's basically treating it like a single light. And you'll see that uh, what happens is that effect will scroll from the right hand side of my roof line to the left side. And once it gets to the left side, it just carries on at the bottom of the small or the large tree sorry and then carries on at the bottom of the small tree after that so it just kind of treats it like one long single light uh, you if you want you can choose uh, to only have a single one i've called this roof line and it's just led 0 to 250 and it doesn't have the other leds so you can see when i select that that the roof line is doing the selected effect but the trees are turned off. And the last thing I'll just show you here is you can have uh, segments that kind of skip over each other. So what I've got here is a blue and white every other light. So you can see that I have my odd light selected. So it's going to be from 0 to 550 uh, with no offset. So grouping is one, but I'm spacing them one apart. And you can see that for the evens, uh, we're going to start on the first LED and then we're going to skip uh, an every LED as well. Again, for the, the whole uh, setup, and basically that gives you a every other LED. And I have one selected to white and one selected to blue solid colors, and that gives you this effect. And again, you can mix and match them as much as you like. Well, that is what I've learned so far, and I have a pretty good idea, I think, of what I'm going to do for my permanent install this summer. I will definitely keep you posted. Hey, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. I really appreciate you watching. And if you did enjoy this video, please hit like and maybe subscribe to my channel. It really helps out. Thanks so much.